All right, we're here at my tiny worm bin, and last time we were in here, we had lots of mites feasting on an old feeding of dates. I also showed a technique I used to decrease the mite population when it kind of gets out of hand in this bin. And then finally, we fed some carrot peels and a couple of carrot pieces on this side. Today, we're gonna see how the bin is doing and decide how we wanna proceed with the feedings. And over here was the side with the dates and the mites. And you can see a couple places where I had put the bread down and was using it to bait out the mites. And I did that, I think, three times total, each time getting more and more mites. So this is a good sign. I'm starting to see worms over here. So that's good. And let's see if the mites decreased and if the worms actually came over here and maybe took care of the dates or maybe the mites themselves took care of the dates. But either way, if there's more dates in here, which I don't think there's gonna be because I just see lots of worms, I was gonna say if we saw some dates, we'd take them out, but this is a great sign. Lots of worms here. So let me keep digging down. I think what probably happened was the worms ate all the other food in the bin and decided they wanted to go for the dates. So good news, great news, and lots of worms. Now, this bin typically gets really moist towards the end of its life cycle. And right now it's at 144 days. It's had 15 feedings. And we're probably not gonna be too much longer, maybe another month in here before we harvest. And what I try and do is get the castings a little drier so that they can sift. Right now, if I tried to sift or pick out these worms, all these castings are kind of sticking together. So if I can get it to dry, and I've got an idea how I can do that without sprinkling in a whole bunch of cardboard shreds and then kind of delaying my harvest time, I've got an idea of how I'm gonna do that. So stay tuned. Let's go ahead and look and see how everything's doing. I am seeing some mites in there, but just not in the quantities that there were before. And I don't wanna say or let you believe that mites are just really bad and you gotta get them out no matter what. Mites do a really good job in the worm bin of kind of shredding food and making it smaller. But when they get kind of overwhelming on a food or you just see big population booms, then that means that the parameters in your bin probably are not as ideal for the worms as they should be. Now this right here looks like, you know what? I think that's the seed of the date. Yes, it's hard as a rock. So no chance this is going to get broken down. So I'm just gonna take it out and I'll rinse it and make sure there's no worms in here. The good news at seeing that seed is that they got all the dates. So let's come on over here to this side, which is also easier for me to get to, and see if there are any carrot peels left. I definitely don't expect to see any carrot peels or even carrot pieces since it's been 10 days that we are in here. And I know that these worms really love carrots. Now we are seeing some pieces of cardboard, and this is kind of what I'm talking about as I get closer and closer to harvest. If I keep putting in tiny shreds of cardboard, I'm gonna see cardboard in there not broken down. So I don't want to get to the point where I'm going through like this and I see pieces of cardboard when I'm trying to harvest. And this cardboard wasn't in here when we started. I just put this in here last week. So no signs of carrots, but a lot of worms. You know, we started this with 600 worms and I thought maybe this was the carrying capacity because over two cycles it got up to 600 worms. But I think we might be past that, just judging on what I'm seeing here. Just lots of red wigglers. I'm really happy with that. Let me just finish aerating, and then we'll set up a feeding zone again. Wow, look at that. Look at all these worms on them. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. All right, so no signs of carrot at all. And what we're going to do is pile up over here so that we can set a feeding zone over here. And I'm excited to try this. I think I see AV doing this. I may be mistaken but I'm gonna give this a try with our bedding. So here we go. So because I don't wanna see lots of cardboard shred when I'm sifting, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a big piece of newspaper. It'll help dry out the bin. And at the same time, I can pull out bigger pieces that are easier to take out when I harvest. And I think I see AV doing this kind of towards the end of his bins. I could be mistaken, but I know he puts big pieces of newspaper like that in. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to add some of these toilet paper rolls. Again, not going to break them down any and just kind of leave it like that to kind of absorb some of the moisture in the bin. And then I'll put the feeding right on there. Now, because we were dealing with mites last time, something I want to do is give them a food that I know the worms will eat fast. And perhaps they will get to it quicker than any mites can overwhelm it. 
And if you look at some of the time lapses I do of the mites, it looks like they are just going so fast, but they're super tiny. So a worm can get across this bin way faster than a mite. So I'm hoping they see or smell or sense or whatever worms do to know that there's good food over here. They get to it and they eat it up fast before any kind of mites can overwhelm them. And I may even put some more bread in just to decrease the population a little bit more. Population was back to what I thought was normal, but we'll do one more round of those bread pieces. You also see that I fed a little bit less than I do normally. I'm trying to decrease the food, put food that I know the worms will eat fast, and see if we can get in here a little bit sooner to check on things. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of our coffee grounds that I add in each time, and that's just another additional food source for them. And then additionally, I'm gonna add a little bit of pulverized eggshells, and this is just grit for the worms. They use it to digest their food, kind of like a bird does in their gizzards. So normally after this, I put a little bit of worm chow on the feeding and even on top, but right now we are testing worm chow and I'm getting some crazy results in my vermi hut worm bin. Um, so you can check that video out if you want. And um, after I post the after video, I think you will get an idea of what I'm gonna make my worm chow out of. So since we're getting close to finishing up this bin, I think this will be a good feeding for them. We didn't have a lot of small bedding. We had that big bedding and just a little bit of good food for them that they'll eat fast. So I hope everything's going well with you. I hope everything's going well with your worm bins and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.